this video, we're going to be solving systems of linear equations by substitution. In the last video, you were to graph the, your system and basically see where they cross. And wherever they cross, well, that was your answer. Well, that's all well and good until you don't have graph paper and you don't have uh, a good graph paper for that matter. So how do we do it now? Well, we use it through an algebraic um, algebraic method called substitution. And it's basically, I won't say this is three steps, but these are the three, three main big steps. It encompasses a lot of different things, but we're gonna walk through these problems together. First off, we need to solve one equation for one of the variables. Uh, try to pick up the easy one, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Two, substitute the expression for um, step one into the other equation and solve. And then three, substitute for the value for step two into one of the original equations and solve. All right, so what's happening here is we're trying to find if where these two points or these two equations are going to break even. And in order to do that, we have to make them uh, equal to something. And then we do some substitution. So instead of just ram rambling around with little terms, analogies, and stuff like that, let's get right onto it. So, you're going to probably need a lot of paper because these things are not always easy. But let's just start with the first one. I have an equation. Y is equal to negative 2X plus 4. And the next one I have is negative X plus 3Y is equal to negative 9. Now, According to my steps, my job is to, step one, solve one equation for one of the variables. But in this particular problem, it's already been done for us. We know something already. We know that y is equal to a negative 2x plus 4. So this y is equal to this expression right here. Okay, so we've already solved for one equation and we set it equal to y. Now, step two says to substitute this expression that I've highlighted here and substitute it into the other equation. So I'm going to take this entire expression and I'm going to substitute it in the place of this y. And what that does is it changes this second equation to look like this. Negative x plus 3 times negative 2 x plus 4, all is equal to negative 9. Now that I've done that, we go to basically solve this thing. And we're still technically in step two. We're getting ready to solve for x. So we kind of got to go back to all our basic understandings of how to solve um, equations. So first off, you should notice that there we are going to simplify this side of our equation, uh, and we're going to use that by doing our distributive property. So three times this, and then we're going to do three times that. So that would give me negative x. Three times a negative two x gives me a negative six x. Three times a positive four gives me a positive 12 is equal to negative nine. I still want to simplify this expression on this side of the equation, so I'm gonna combine my like terms. I have a negative x, which is technically a hidden one here. A negative one x minus six gives me negative seven x plus 12 is equal to a negative nine. Now, we have something that seems a lot more easier and familiar to do. We go ahead and use our rules for SADMAP because we've got this expression simplified as far as we can take it. So now we use rules of SADMAP and we get rid of our subtraction and addition. So we are going to subtract 12 on both sides. When I do, this cancels out and this gives me negative 7x is equal to a negative 21 because negative 9 minus 12 is negative 21. I continue doing side map, and the next step is do multiplication and division. So I'm going to divide by seven, negative 7 on both sides, and I get that x is equal to 3. All right, now, here's the thing. I just found out what x is. Remember back in the last video, I told you that when we're solving for a system of equations, our answer is always supposed to be written as an ordered pair. All we know right now is that x is equal to 3. So my job is to find out what y is. So I'm going to take this piece right here, 
this three, and I am going to plug it back into one of my original equations. In this case, I'm gonna plug it back here. So I'm gonna say y is equal to negative two, and I'm gonna put three in the place of x plus four. So y is equal to negative six plus four, and y is equal to a negative two. So, what have I found out? I found out that my x is 3 and my y is negative 2. So, my solution to this thing as an ordered pair is 3 and negative 2. Now, we can prove this. And the way we prove this to make sure that this is right is by plugging it into this second equation and checking our solution. So, we're going to plug this back into the second equation. And we're going to just double check it. Negative, and we'll put a three there, plus three times negative two equals negative nine. Negative three plus a negative six is equal to a negative nine, and negative nine is equal to negative nine. That doesn't cheat and indeed check out. So my solution for this is, neg is three and negative two. Now, just like we did last time, and I'm not going to review this with you for the sake of video time, could we do this graphically and could we do this on our calculator? Yes, we can. All we have to do is, if you can remember from the last video, we have to plug this equation into our calculator, and then we have to rewrite this equation as y equals and put it in our calculator and graph it. So we can double check it via calculator. If you don't remember how to do that, please go back and watch the 4.1 video. I'm not gonna cover that over in this video right now. I just want to cover the, the algebraic part. So, moving on, we know that this works, so our answer for this would be 3 and negative 2. And if we were to graph it, like I said, if it were to graph, it would, uh, we would have a line and it would end up crossing something. I'm just making this up somewhere around here at 3 and negative 2. It would look something to that nature. All right, now, as you can see, that's a lot of work for this system of equations. Well, this is how this works. It's just going to be a lot of algebraic work on it. So, number two, we have 3 fourths times x minus 5 times y equals 7. And we know that x is equal to negative 4y plus 12. So, step one, solve one equation for a variable. Well, we've already done that. We know x is equal to this expression. So step two, we are going to take this expression and we're going to plug it in the place of our other equation in x. So let's do that. Three fourths times negative four y plus 12 minus five y equals seven. So now, yes, it's a fraction. No big deal. Guess what? We have calculators, and guess what? Nothing changes. We are getting ready to go into finish step two by substituting in and solving, and we're going to use the distributive property. So 3 fourths times negative 4y gives me negative 3y. 3 fourths times a positive 12 will give me a positive 9. And then we have minus 5y equals 7. We're going to combine our like terms. Negative 3y minus 5y plus 9 equals 7. So let's finish it. Negative 3y minus 5y gives me negative 8y plus 9 equals 7. I'm going to subtract 9 on both sides, and I get that 8y is equal to negative, uh, oops, uh, negative, hmm, double checking my math here. Yep, double, sorry, I was about to say something. It gives me a negative two. And now I need to divide by eight on both sides and I'm running out of room. And, but when I do, I find out that Y is equal to negative one fourth. How do I know that? Because two, and we can prove it. Whoops, we can prove that by saying uh, two, Divide by eight is one fourth. Okay, double check it myself. And that is actually a positive one fourth. I have missed a number. So because that was a negative two and a negative eight. So that is gonna give me y is equal to one fourth. 
All right. This is why it's important that you actually have plenty of room to write because you can lose your track. So on some of these other problems that you have in the book, do not write and do your work all in one teeny tiny area because you need all the space you can get. Now, we have done and found what Y is. So step three says substitute what we found in step two, which was the Y, and then solve into one of the equations and solve. Well, here's the thing. I'm lazy. I'm gonna be. I'm. It doesn't matter if I use this one or this one. I am myself. I'm gonna use this one because it's just gonna give me x right when I do it. So I'm gonna go. X is equal to negative four times one fourth plus twelve. So x is equal to negative four times one fourth is negative one, and then negative one plus twelve is going to give me a positive eleven. So if I've done this correctly, my answer is my x value is 11, my y value is 1 fourth. So this should be my ordered pair to where my lines would cross. But we have to verify it. What we need to do is take this and plug it into the other equation we did not use. So let's plug it in. 3 fourths times 11 minus 5 times one fourth equals seven. So let's use our calculator on this one. I don't feel like working so hard. Remember, three fourths can be written as 0.75, and we're gonna say 11, and then we're gonna go minus five times 0.25. And the reason why I'm using those is because it's just easier to put it in as decimals and fractions in this case. And if I've done this right, we should get seven. And we did. So this does work out. So our answer for this is 11 and 1 fourth. All right, so why don't you try and, uh, nope, I'm not gonna do that, Never mind. I wanna actually work all these problems out with you in this video. I want you to see them all. All right, so number three, I have five X minus Y equals four and two X plus two Y equals 16. So right off the bat, you should realize that we have a problem. We don't know what X is and we don't know what Y is. And so step one tells us to solve one equation for one of the variables. Here's the thing. It does not matter which one you use. You can use the first one or you can use the second one. However, this is something that comes with time and comes with patience. I've been doing this since I'd say at least the past 30 no, 20 some odd years of my life. And so I can look at this and I can tell which one I would probably do. It would make it easier for me. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what you've got to figure out is which one makes it easier for you. Okay. And your job is to solve for it. So let's say, for instance, I decided I chose this one. I could solve for X and that would be fine. I could also choose this one, and instead of solving for X, I could choose for Y, and that would be fine. And the same thing goes for this one. What if I chose this one? Well, that's cool, and I choose which one I think is going to be the easiest method for me. And so this is part of the, the this method of substitution that's really kind of aggravating. You have four right there are four possible ways of solving this right now. The choice is, is by you, is just looking at it and finding out what you think is best. I'm going to pick something, and for me, I just want to pick this first one, and I'm going to solve for Y. So, I'm going to use that one, and we'll kind of write it down on the side here, because I'm going to have to need as much space as possible. 5X minus Y is equal to 4. So, what my job is, is I'm decided that I want to solve for Y. Why? I don't know, just want to. So, I'm going to get Y by itself. So 5x has got, to be, has got to be moved. And since it's a positive 5x, I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So that gives me where this cancels out. And then I have negative y is equal to 4 minus 5x. And since there's a negative here, technically there's a hidden one. So that's not just a negative y, but a negative 1y. So I can divide both sides by negative 1 now. And that gives me y is equal to negative 4 plus 5x, because 4 divided by negative 1 is negative 4, and negative 5 divided by negative 1 is a positive 5. I used the distributive property of division here. Now, I know what y is. I have an expression. 
So I can take this and plug it into my second equation. So let's do that. 2x plus 2y. Uh, and our y in this case is going to be negative 4 plus 5x and equals 16. So 2x plus 2 times negative 4 plus 5x equals 16. Now that I've done that, it's just a matter of simplifying this side. We need to simplify this part of the equation first, and we're gonna use the distributive property again. So I have 2x, and 2 times negative 4 gives me a minus 8, and 2 times a positive 5x gives me a plus 10x equals 16. Let's continue to simplify by combining our like terms. 2x plus 10x minus 8 is equal to 16. And now we're going to keep going. And I get 12x minus 8 is equal to 16. Now that I have simplified this side and it is no longer, um, it is all the like values are gone, like terms are gone, and it's simplified, we can start using SADMIP by adding 8 to both sides because we need to get rid of that subtraction. And I get 12x is equal to, 12x is equal to 24. And now I can divide by 12 on both sides, and I get that x is equal to 2. Now, that's only the first part of it, because remember, our answer has to be an ordered pair. So we need to put 2 in the place of one of these equations. So I'm going to put it in the place of the original. Now notice that I'm not using this. I am using the original. So I'm going to come down here, and just I would normally come over to this side, but I'm running out of room. So I'm going to go 5 times 2 minus y is equal to 4. This gives me 10 minus y is equal to 4. I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides, and I get negative y is equal to negative 6. And then I want to divide by negative 1 on both sides, and I find out that y is equal to 6. So if I've done this correctly, my solution, I found out that my x is 2 and my y is 6. So this should be my ordered pair in which these two lines cross. So... Let's find out if I am right. And the way we do that is we take this ordered pair and we plug it into the second equation to double check ourselves. So we're going to say 2 times 2, because x is 2, plus 2 times y, and we just said it's going to be 6 in this case, equals 16. So we get 4 plus 12 is equal to 16. And is that true? Yes, 16 does equal 16. So our answer is 2 and 6. So why don't you take a moment and I want you to try number 4 on your own. So what you should have got for number four was that your ordered pair should have been nine and a negative six. And like always, if you don't know what happened and you're not sure what you did wrong, come find me or ask somebody. And also, don't forget, you do have this calculator. And I showed you how to do system of equations with your calculator in the last video. So this will also help you double check your answer. All right, so number five, I'm going to help you a little bit with this one, and then I'm going to kind of leave the rest of it to you as a challenge problem. So it says this, a gas station sells a total of 4,500 gallons of regular gas and premium gas in one day. The ratio of gallons of regular gas sold to the gallons of premium gas is sold is 7 to 2. All right, so we've got a lot of information coming at us right now. Well, first off, we don't let's let's go ahead and make ourselves some variables, okay? Let's go ahead and make some variables. We know that we're dealing with regular gas and premium gas. So, for the sake of argument, we're going to say that R happens to be our regular gas, and we're going to say that P is going to be our premium gas. All right? So, what do we know right from that first sentence? It says, I sell a total of this many gallons of both regular and premium gas in one day. So I can say that regular, however many that is, plus however many gallons of premium I sold, all together is equal to 4,500. All right? Now... The next piece is a little bit more difficult. It says that the ratio of gallons of gas was sold uh, to gallons of premium gas sold is 72. That is saying this. 
I know that I am, according to this, if this right here is regular gas and this is premium gas, it's telling me that they are equal to another, one another. I don't know how much regular gas I sold, but seven times that, that ratio, is equal to twice as many as my premium. Notice that all I really did was just put an equal sign there, but this is what the ratio is. Whatever I was making from the regular, if I multiplied it by seven, it's the same ratio, it's the same as twice as the premium. Now that I have this, I have my system of equations. R plus P is equal to 4,500, uh, and 7R is equal to 2P. Now, pause. Is it necessary that I needed to use R and P? No, it doesn't, but I could have used X and Y just as fine. So your job as a challenge problem is, why don't you try number, um, finish uh, 5B on your own, come show it to me and uh, ask me some questions if you're stumped on it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.